اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك عبيد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك عبيد مجيد السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته All thanks, adorations, commendations are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His household companions and the generality of Muslims. You know, it's very uncommon in Nigeria that when you are going somewhere, you have to use Google Map. It's very uncommon. But in the UK, in the US, there are many places you cannot go without the GPS. And that makes you appreciate the work of Muhammad Because if Muhammad has not been a guide, Wallahi, you and I would not be humble enough to stay in the mosque. And this is the privilege, if not for the mercy of Allah and the benevolence he gave Muhammad I wouldn't have had the opportunity to be in a beloved, amazing and reputable establishment like this place. So I am thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm thankful to our fathers, I'm thankful to the leadership of this wonderful establishment. I thank Ustaz Humar, who is my good friend, and I thank all of you for taking the time to listen to a small boy like me. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward you abundantly. I want to share a story with you. And this happened in a class in the US. So I work in a school where they require me to use my Nigerian experience in the US. There was a girl, one morning she came to school one day and she has eaten half of her head. One morning. She had eaten, she would point it out like this and put it in the mouth. And they called me to say that at least what would be happening. But there was only a problem. Both parents at home were fighting. Because they were fighting, the child did not get any care and attention. She was so hungry that nobody could take care of her, and the only thing she could resort to was to find less fight in eating her hair. This is how despicable or how challenging some experiences can be for children. I will share another story with you. There was a girl that accepted Islam at the age of 17 in the US. She reached out to me that she wanted to improve in Islam. But this lady had just undergone the third surgery. Do you know the reason for the surgery? It is obesity. Obesity. What caused it? So there is there are types of parenting. Number one, we have biological parents, we have foster parents. We have step parent, we have adoptive parent, we have single parent, we have grandparent, among others. So what is common abroad is that some girls, because alhamdulillah we have Islam, when they have children, they can easily go and put the child in what they call foster care. So a lady like 17 or 18 will be pregnant and take the child to just one establishment that the government should take care of the child. So the girl was taken to foster care. There was no father, there was no mother. In that foster care, that girl has been abused since the age of five. Sexually abused. Nobody absolutely could she talk to because nobody would believe her. And every time they abused her, the only way she could take respite or be happy is to go and eat. Then she became addicted to food that she, the food that she had eaten, now threatens her life. And because of the fault of a parent, this lady, well, why I don't even know if she's dead by now? Because that surgery, I don't even know if it was successful. She only reached out to me because they called me a child expert and wanted to advise her. My brothers and sisters, if you look at these two stories I shared with you, something is missing. It is the value of Islam. Because this is not the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked us to raise our children. Among fathers, grandfathers that are here, many of you are successful parents. That is why you are here. But I want to ask you a question. What kind of parent are you at the moment? 
And what kind of parent have you been in the past? It's imperative for us to ask this question because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask you on the day of Qiyamah. Even though it says, wa mumihi wa hamihi wa sahibati wa bani, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also said, al nanu wal banu, zinat al ahyat al dunya, and these children are blessings for us. Then, if children are blessings for us, it means that it is an amana we have to be thankful for. Because if Allah has blessed you with something, what do you do? You thank him. And I swear to die again. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله سبحانه وتعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا كونوا أنفسكم وعليكم نار وكنتم أنس والحجار وعليها ملائكة غلاف الشياد I am very scared anytime I read these words because there are three lessons I'm able to pick from them أولا الله سبحانه وتعالى is calling on not everybody but a few of us يا أيها الذين آمنوا Allah called on the believers then he says, He now give us a warning. And every time Allah is giving us a warning, it means there is going to be a problem. It means there is going to be a problem. Now, what is now scary is that he said, because if you don't save your family, they are malaikas who are not merciful. I will tell you one of the names. There is a malaika called Malik. Malik is the custodian of El Fire. When Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam did al suwab al-Miraj, all of the angels were happy to receive the Prophet. Everybody smiled and they were lost in happiness except one person. The name of that person is Malik, the custodian of El Fayyad. As a result of curiosity, the Prophet was shocked that why will everybody welcome me and this particular person would not welcome me? Then he asked Jubilee and he said, who is this person? This is the answer Jubilee gave. Jubilee said, that is Malik, the custodian of El Fire, who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not put mercy in his heart. The implication of that is that even when people are crying and they are suffering, Malik is not going to feel their pain because Allah has not put mercy and clemency in his heart. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we are not a good parent, this is going to be what is going to befall you. I am not here to read to you how to be a good parent. Because Alhamdulillah, if you are not a good parent, you will not be here in this mosque. But I am here for you to reflect and ask yourself a question. That what kind of parent have you been? Let me go to psychology. In psychology, there are few types of parents. They say there is an authoritarian parent, and there is an authoritative parent, there is a permissive parent, and there is an uninvolved parent. Authoritarian parent is such a parent that just gives instructions. Go and do this and you have to do this. But if Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was not there, one day with Allah Alaihi Wasallam said, Anas saved the money, Allah Allah, and he sent him on an errand. At that time, Anas was around 10. Anas was joking with the Prophet, Ya Rasulullah, I'm not even going to where you are going to send me. He was joking with the Prophet. Interestingly, because of the tenderness of his age, Anas was going by and saw a group of children playing. Well, why he forgot that this Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has sent him on an errand and he was watching when they were playing. The Prophet was looking at the time that where is Anas? He was now tracing his legs. Because of course, if you have been to Mecca, you know there is sand and you could easily trace the legs. Then he got to the point and he stood behind Anas in the morning. You know if it were to be you, okay, because you people are kind. Let me say from where I came from in the south in Lagos. If my father or my mother sent you on an and I'm watching for the kind of knock they are going to give me, for to the day of Kiyama, the shape is going to be on our head. To the day of Kiyama. But if Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam got there, and you know what he did? He only pat the back of Anas. And he said, Yeah, Anas. But well, you remember I sent you on the message. He said, Yeah, Rasulullah, well, why I'm going to go now? He smiled and he ran away. And with a lot of smile and went back. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That was the person that came to give you the message of mercy. The prophet was not an authoritarian. He was going to seek the consent of children. He was going to apologize when it's wrong. He was going to ask for the advice from kids. So the apparent here that psychology has defined them as authoritarian. The only thing they do is that they give command. And for the, they will even impose the guy on their children without even understanding that Allah has given that child a right. 
And the child never have a say in anything in their lives, not even their education. And let me pause for a moment. If I want to give out the mic and ask you that tell me, you have a child. What kind of learner is your child? What is the personality of your child? Who can tell me? If I ask you, what is the personality of your child? How many of you know the personality of your child? And if you get the answer, I'm not going to send it to Maka because I don't, I cannot afford it. I don't have the money to send it to Maka, but I will just say just like Allah. So how many of you know the personality? Just please, let's have a conversation. I don't want to be a lecturer. I'm not in the university. How many of you know the personality of your children? What exactly do you know about your child? What kind of learner is your child? Why is your child struggling in school? What could have happened the night before Monday morning that makes your child not want to go to school? Have you taken a moment to observe or you are just an angry Nigerian parent who thinks she's just trying not to go to school? A child came to our school this morning. Unusually, she said she was not going to enter the class and they came to call me. Her name is Zainab, she's five years old. And the mother said, staff, you people are too kind, force her to go to the class. Then I carried her and I said, line up, you are going to be my brother and I have a lot of things to give you. Eventually she followed me and when I asked her what happened, you know what she told me? That when she was washing her teeth, the way her mother talked to her, she did not like it. That is a five-year-old. Parenting has changed. Time and space has changed. Many of our cars are not manual anymore. The children we are giving birth to today are going to go back, they are going to go not to even see that we have ever driven a manual car because there is now automatic truck everywhere. In the U.S. or across the world, there are driverless cars that you don't need a driver. You just need to say, hey Siri, I am going to shop right and it's going to take you to shop right. You don't need to even make dua except Bismillah that you have made it. Because the car has been programmed to even understand the situation on the road. Time and space has changed. Therefore, parenting cannot be what it used to be in the past. So what kind of parent is appropriate? There is no perfect parenting, but you can actually look for a way to be a remarkable parent to your parents, to your, to your own children. And I'm going to tell you a story. You know what? My father is the greatest teacher I have in my life. And then, every time I go to the, I, so I'm studying in the U.S. And every time I travel abroad, when I come to Nigeria, my father would... It happened the first time I did not know the value. They would not even sleep until I got home. The second time it happened. And this past Ramadan, my father, when Ramadan was fought, my father was traveling for a meeting in another state in South West. And as the law would have it, while he was on the journey, Allah took his sight. And my father, who went out seeing, came back blind to the house. And then I was in the US at that time. And they called me, we make to her, he had a surgery. Then I was talking to him, pacifying him. I didn't understand the value until I came back to Nigeria. And you know, for a moment, when I was about to enter the house, my father was saying that there is a God will see me to work with And this made me emotional because I know the kind of parents I have. They were not just average parents, they were parents that were present in our lives. So I'm asking you a question today. That if Allah should take your life today, would your child ever cry for you? If Allah should actually test you with your health today, are your children going to be sympathetic enough to leave whatever they are doing and come and stay with you? How merciful have you been to your own children? What are the kind words you have said to them that nobody had ever said to them before? What are the kind of play that you have been able to have with them that they have never experienced with any other person? What kind of feeling have you given your children that they always want to come because you are the only one that, are good, that could give them that beautiful feeling? If it were to be just about money, Allah is going to suffice them because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, 
موضعك ربك وضع كل ولا العقل وضع خير لك من الأولى ولا صوفع يتيك ربك فضع ألم يجدك يتيما فأعوى الله سبحانه وتعالى لمن محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم that it was an offer when Allah سبحانه وتعالى surprised him what I'm asking you here in the most today that should anything happen to you today what is going to be the fate of your own children if you pretend for a moment that you are dead how are your children going to feel And there are a few types of another parent I want to mention to you. There is something we call facilitative parent and conventional parent. Facilitative parents are people or type of parent that are present in their life. They know everything happening in their life. In their school, they have a remarkable relationship with their teachers. In their Islamia, they know where they are. When they come back from Islamia, they are asking them, what have you learned? And you know what I just remembered now? My father, every time we went to Islamia, would ask us to come and read the Quran to him. It took me 10 years for me to know that he did not even know what we were reading to him. He does not even know the roof. But every time we went to the Islamia, he's going to God and ask us to sit down, read what you have learned for us. There was that fear in our minds that when we go and we come back, we have to read for it. So we have to pay extra attention. We never knew that he did not even know what he was asking us to read. So again, I want to ask you, what kind of parent are you? Because no matter the investment we have, no matter how beautiful, how fascinating our investment are, if you are not the kind of parent you are going to be, all of those things you have labored for, nobody is going to manage it for you. And I swear by Allah, if money were to be what make people happy, we would not have rich people commit suicide. If money was everything, opposition was everything, our politicians would not be tired of opposition and say, well, Allah, he is not, he's just going to have money. The greatest gift Allah could ever give any one of you is a successful child that you have raised yourself. And today, if, and if you know what is obtainable in the South, when you have a problem, Christians will come to you. I know of over 22 people who have come to my father telling him, come and go here, come and go here, come and go here. But every time they come to him, he will tell them what to have, what they need is such a man, what that and what book are, what not done. Because he has children who has continually chosen to remind him about the mercy, not taking it to me or anything else. So ask yourself. Again, there are another type of parents. These parents are physically present but emotionally absent. They are in their house with their children. Their children can see them, but their children cannot feel them because they are only physically present. They are always on calls, they are always on their phone, they have not had time to even speak with their children. They don't even know the combination of the clothes of their own children, yet they are in the house. The children see them, but never felt them. Why some? They are physically present and emotionally present. They care about their children and their children feel them. We have a summer camp going on in our school at the moment. Then I met a parent. Then, Allah and Allah would have me, she's a widow. She lost her husband four months ago. But you know what is interesting? Till this moment, she said, You know what? My children have not felt as if their father is dead. And these children, one is five, the other is two. Those children are orphans at the moment, but they don't have a father. But even despite how small they are, they did not feel the absence of their father. That is why I asked you a question, that should anything happen to you today, what is going to be the feeling of your own child? And it's not difficult to do. You just have to have a sense of responsibility. Because you need to remember, it is an amanda. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask you on the day of Qiyam. Allah, Allah is going to ask you. And I don't know the kind of understanding you have, but I want to appeal to you that if you are not a good person, you would not take time to sit down to listen to me. It shows how remarkable and how blessed Allah has actually given you his blessings. But don't forget, the way you raise your firstborn might not be the way you are going to raise your secondborn. Because again, what is happening, time and space has changed. 
Before now, we are only going to go. I don't know how it happened here. I've been living in the north for a long time. But I know we used to go to the kids to go and buy recharge card from some center, then they would load to our phones. But now, even from your bank, you can actually do anything. Our grandparents never had a phone, they never wanted a phone. But now, they can tell you the comedians on, 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 on Facebook. They will tell you the name of the, of the comedians. When they go to Mecca before, they will only come and tell you the stories they saw in Mecca. But now they can even do WhatsApp video call with you and tell you how they are feeling. All of those innovations are coming and you think the renting is going to remain the same. It is not possible. It is not possible. Because at the moment, you are either one or you are going to be home. Either you are a biological parent or you are going to be a grandparent one day. I pray to Allah to give all of us good and long life. Say Amen. Amen. So some of us are already grandparents. But the interesting thing is that the way you raise your own children is not the way you are raising your grandchildren. In fact, your children are even surprised that, ah, why is my father now at this tender? He was never like this before. And your child is now scared of bringing his own children because you know you are going to spoil them. Because what? Time and space have changed. But despite how time changed, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was an epitome of example. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam, anytime we remember Ismail, what do we remember about him? Obedience to what? To his father. But what do you know about his father? His father was also obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I'm going to ask you another question. What is the kind of a model that you have given your own child? When I was a bit younger, our father used to encourage one thing in our house. We used to fast Monday and Thursday. So he would not force us to fast. But my mother had a small shop, and any one of us who never fasted would be the one to attend to all of the customers and arrange the whole shop after Monday. And he was not complaining. So the one who is fasting will go have two meats. Have plenty rice, then one big Pepsi. It was not expensive at that time. It used to be like 15 or 17 naira. And you will now be looking at your mother and saying, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. On Thursday, nobody will beg before you say, Well, why am I to fast? Those were one of the simple ways that our parents were able to inculcate the love of Islam in our hearts. Even before I became a doctor, my father would call me his professor. And the most beautiful names were such that I only could actually hear from my parents. So there are a couple of things I would advise you to do for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because again, I've not seen any failed parents here, alhamdulillah. But again, don't forget, so when I was in the university, I had a class of grandparents coming for diploma. All of them came for diploma in early childhood education. In our first class, I now had them a question that you, all of you, you are grandmas. What will a small boy like me teach you? That if you are not successful parents or grandparents, you wouldn't have had time at your 70s or 60s to come and take a diploma course in the University of Davis. So we were just joking. And I said, you know what? You have learned the practical part of parenting. I am going to teach you the science of parenting. And I'll give them one example. I don't know whether it's common in the north. Apologies, I'm sorry. When you have, when a child is doing pickups, in the south they will just go and remove one thread and put it on the head of that child, and they feel that that thread is going to make the hiccup to go. You know, Shaitan is very wicked. Shaitan make it look as if it was a medical intervention for them, and they believed in it. But you know, in psychology, it is just something that happened with the brain. And the way we regulate itself, you don't have to do anything in psychology. In med ask the medical doctor, say, you don't have to do anything, it's going to go by itself. So I now ask them, how many of you have done this before? They were now hiding their faces and we were laughing about it. And I now told them that actually what you have done was not wrong, but it has no basis. Then they learned something. And that was how we had 13 weeks like and they never missed any place. The day we were going to depart, they were very emotional. So my brothers and sisters, fathers and grandfathers here, one of the things you should never stop doing for your own children is making to have for them. I swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whose hands lies my soul, the most quietly gift and the most fulfilling gift you can ever have in your life is a good child. 
for nothing. He said, you will not have money and you will be looking so good. You will have challenges and you will not feel the pain of the agony or of the challenges or the distress that you are into. Because what? You can easily go back and you will look back and say that that is my child. You will be happy to see your child talking in the best gym. And I tell my parents, you know what? The greatest gift you have given me is Islam. When I go to the U.S., my father did not have money to, take, to give me to go to the U.S. So I was very hungry and then there was not too much for me. So I went to my school mosque and a guy from Egypt saw me and asked me, Hey, salam alaikum. I said, wa alaikum salam. Kaif al-haram. Alhamdulillah khayyib alhamdulillah. And he said, what is the name of the Malik Abdul Razak? Okay, can you, lead, can, can, you, can you do khutbah? I said, of course. Then he asked me to come the following week. Then I did the first khutbah, they gave me $60. Ah. And I was like, nah, stick for that. No, it's fine. Jazakallah. I said, no, 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 no. <laughs> you know, in Nigeria, everything is Jazakallah khayyad. But in Abu they don't do like that. They Jazakallah khayyad and they actually. So, the next one, he now said, okay, you know what, Abdul Razak, don't go. That we used to have true khutbahs. Then, can you do the second khutbah? Ah. I said, you're my I don't have money, and I'll tell him, I will do even seven foot, but I will not be saying that's like food. <laughs> I will do 20. Just if, if it is still Friday, let me continue doing it. Then they said, come and do the second foot. Uh-uh. And in one day, I had more $20. Sheikh, Allah, I went to go, I went to African store, buy more food, and say, Bismillah, Rahman, and Alhamdulillah, and Alhamdulillah, and Alhamdulillah, and Alhamdulillah, and Alhamdulillah, I was eating. Then what came to my mind was the foundation of what actually gave me that money was not being smart, was the remarkable effort of my own parents. Then when I called them and said, don't even bother to send me anything, I don't have a new source of income. Well, why they were very happy. And you know what? That now continued every week. They would not ask me, do you ask about They don't always ask me again. My time, my prayer, Lillahi wa rasuli. Everything is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as parents, at every point in time, you need to assess yourself and look at your children and ask yourself what kind of parent are you. Because it happened at the time of the Prophet of Allah, that the Prophet of gave a child in the forehead. And the Sahaba, a man saw him and said, Ya Rasulullah, why are you doing this? Ah, he said, because he has never done that. You know the expression of the which was scary. He said, Allah has not placed mercy in your hands. So how many of you were the last time you kissed the forehead of your own child? Let me show you something. Whenever the Prophet of Allah sees Fatima radiallahu anha, he's going to stand, walk up to her with so much respect to go and embrace her daughter. Say, Salamu alaikum, Fatima. With so much happiness, eagerness, and enthusiasm, he's going to rush to go and greet his own daughter like that. So if my father come and come and say, I greet the Prophet of Salamu alaikum, my brother, how are you? Would you disrespect me when you saw my father do that? It's not possible. You wouldn't have a choice than to respect me. When my father never respected me, you would rather slap me in front of him. Therefore, the kind of parenting you are putting forth in front of people would determine their disposition to your own child. So, how much have you respected your own child? There was a day they called my father for this, uh, for resolution to a marriage. And he said, Afiz, let's go together. When we got there, he sought their permission that I should be there. They said, no problem. On sitting there, he said, Afiz, until you talk, I will not talk. That was the greatest honor of my life. As Allah would have it, Allah placed his mercy in my mouth, and I wouldn't know what I said, that Allah just put barakah in what I said. And the next thing the man came to do was, is he your brother or your child? That we don't even have to hear anything again. And my father said, thank you for making me proud. Thank you for making me proud. Make to her for your children. Yes, exactly. Make, always make to her for your children. Number one. Number two. Engage your children in a very respectful manner that will make it too difficult for people to disrespect your own children. Number three, give your children a feeling that no other person can ever give them. On the social media, I've been analyzing anonymous message of a particular influencer. When was the last time?
time we check the book from Islamia of the original. Have you ever said a story to your child that says that, oh, my father had told me this. Some of you, your children trust their teachers more than you. And they are going to argue with you to say, no, my teacher said no, my teacher said no. That is a sign of a challenge you have to run it on. You should be the best person the child will ever trust. When there was a problem between Allah and Fatima and Aniya, who did they go and meet? Fatima went to the house of the Nabi and said, Ya Rasulullah, I'm not sure I can continue the marriage anymore. The very now went to the house and went to talk to Hali that she's a woman, be tender to her, she's my princess. She's my queen. She's the love of my life. What beautiful name do you call your children? And I know something in the north. Wallahi, I have to tell you this. An average child has kuniya in the north. It's not very common in the south. You will see a child, his name is Noreen, but they, will, they, they might call him Selim. You will see a child, a name is Demir, but they might, they might call him something else. This is very beautiful. You will hear Ibrahim, Kalilullah, um, Suleiman, Ammar, very beautiful things. So you are, all, you are already on the path of success. You just need to be more intentional about it. Because the world is not going to help you nurture your child. The world is wicked enough for your child to acclimatize. It's too difficult. In conclusion, in psychology there is something we call adverse childhood trauma. What that means is that experiences at a tender age can make a child go to have cancer, cardiovascular problems, heart problems, among others. And you people will be confused. Let me explain. How can experiences in tender age make a child now go to have life-threatening problems? I will explain. If there are two people like this, one comes from a family where the mother is always happy, the father is happy, when they cry, they embrace him. His brain is going to adjust to love and trust. Another child is going to cry, nobody comes to him. Then, he pee on his body, nobody is fast to change him. And everything he hears in the morning is shout, is cry, among other things. It's when we adjust to mistrust. When this child will be happy and smile, and that will take away some sickness from him, this child will fall sick because of lack of proper hygiene, lack of care. That can lead to hormonal problems because our brain actually functions based on happiness. That is why some drugs would not work in your body because your hormone, you are too stressed. Some drugs are not working because your hormone is not balanced. Unhappiness can affect your hormone. So whenever I see pregnant people, I tell them, and they have problems with their children, I said, when you were pregnant, were you happy? Or you had a mental health problem? Because maternal mood affects the child. So this child will now start growing we are having problem, he will be sick today, he will have headache, nobody will care for him. They will just remember and give him one paracetamol and it's going to come again. Anything that is not adequately taken care of will escalate to something else. And the child will now start going with problem that will not lead to something we cannot manage again. Therefore, you need to ask yourself, what kind of experience am I going to help my child to have that is going to make him the most pleasant person? Brethren, we can go on and go on and go on. But I want to tell you something. That Wallahi, you are all pleasant spirits. But the only thing, I, one of the things I want to take from the small boy talking to you today is that time and space has changed. And no mosque was never like this before. The investment of people in a no mosque is changing it. In the next one year, inshallah, or two years, people that have never been here would never, would never be able to recognize this place again when the center is ready. And time would have changed. And this space must have also changed. We might have to move from here. I wouldn't know how they want to do it. So you cannot just always think that the way you do things is correct. No. Because even Salah Allah had a teacher who was Jubilee and he said that to us. So please, go back home today and try to study your own child. Is your child a visual learner? Is he an audio learner? Is he a kinesthetic learner? I learned to Yasin from my father always playing the Quran every morning. 
And let's not look only because my father would always pray, not look look every morning for us. I learned kindness because my father was always the one who was actually kind to many people. So what, how, what kind of burden do you have to your children? A child came to school and, and gave another child sweets. And I said, why? He said, because my mother told me I always have to share with other fees. Those children are very tender, they are very young. It is whatever you put in their heart that is going to extend in their lives. So I'm begging you. Why I'm begging you is because many of you are nice. When your sibling or you have you take a child of your brother and put him in your house, you have become a foster parent. When you have grandchildren, you have become a grandparent. When you think that the child is not properly taken care of and you went to the court to go and take documentation, you have become a legal parent. So at every point in our life, we are always a parent. So that is why you need to ask yourself, because the more that you do today is going to live throughout the life of some children, they would never forget you. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us better parents. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make our children the coolness of our eyes. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us on how to be the most beloved to our own children. I pray to Allah to give us good life and wealth that is going to make us a pleasant parent our children desire of us. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our shortcomings and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us with righteousness and righteous children and make them the best among their parents. Before I, I round off, please, I want you to make a dua for my father. Because I know that there is nothing to hack and not. So everything is fine medically, but we are just waiting for the mercy and the glory of our Sukhara. Because I don't know how close we have. And this is the most dear person to me in my life. My parents are the most pleasant people I've ever had. Even when I was coming here, they have made to have for me that Allah is going to guide me to me. And every day they call me in the morning, they call me in the night. But you know what happened? I got an invitation from a reputable bank in Nigeria to be their conductor for their program. And it was in Lagos. It was a program that was attended by more than 6,000 people. And I was among, I was among the three Muslims they invited. And then it is the day I wanted my father to come and see me on the stage. My father could not come before the campus. So this put tears into my heart. And every time I think about it, I cannot but cry about it because this is the man who has invested so much in my life. So please, make, I, will, I want you to help me. And I, I, I hope I have your permission. Indeed. So I want you to make sure to do her together. And please, his name is Al Hajj Abdul Razak Muhammad Oloji. Please, just in a second, say, please ask Allah to turn his sight and give him good health. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. Wa duha wa nini ila lija. Ma wa ta'aka wa puka wa mokada. Wa la laaki wa zafai wa laka bina wa mula. Wa la sofai wa tika wa puka wa falda. Wa la miya jidi ka yati wa kufa wa. وجدك ضالا فعدا ووجدك عائلا فعدا فمن يتيم فلا تكهر وأما السائل فلا تنهر وأما النائمة ربك فأنتس إزاق الله خير سبحانك الله والحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا تغتر فلا تغتر سبحان ربك وابن عزة ما يصفون والسلام على المسلمين الحمد لله رب العزاق والخزاء. يا الله قطين تبلس. Now you see there is something we call reward and punishment in psychology. It is something you have to be very careful about because there is a comment on the enforcement in psychology. Children are very fast to believe in things. The moment they always have to have their way on everything, they will think that is the normal way to do things. So therefore, the person that told you that you have to regulate, let me use the word, regulate the way you give children is it, very important. Because they are going to see it as the normal thing. Why? The age of zero to eight is the formative years. Between three and five, an average child brain is developing more than everybody in this room. At that time, the, the brain is developing at 98%, 3 and 5 years. 
And you know your own brain is not going to be developing at their own, it's going to be developing at that time. So anything you do is very sensitive to them. And they will just think that is the normal thing. So giving them money or giving them reward or doing things is good. There are other forms of rewards. Number one, let me give you an example. Everybody is, you want all of the children to sit and they are not sitting. And one of them has sat. You can easily say, oh, no, hey, the Zaka Law fair for sitting. Thank you for sitting. Thank you for listening. And just keep on emphasizing, no, hey, the Zaka Law fair for sitting. Thank you for sitting. You have subconsciously passed a message that they are not sitting there, that they are not getting the Zaka Law fair. That does not have any price. One. Number two is that you also need to use good words. And you should also know when to withdraw their privileges. Because there are times you have to disappoint them. So sometimes when the child comes and asks you, tell them, I'm sorry, I'm not going to give you today, but inshallah next time. When is next time? Just go to Allah. So let me give you an example with myself. I like to give children lollipops. I like to do that. So now they now turn to something that, so that means, we don't give us lollipop, not give us lollipop. So today, what I now do is that I have a small perfume. I will not announce those that pray very well. After they say assalamu alaikum to that, I just went to them and put the perfume in their hand. And after they said subhanahu alaikum, I just went and I said, all of you that got the perfume, you are the one that prayed very well. And they were very happy. So not all, don't always make it something tangible. The word can be intangible, number one. And it should not be at every point in time. Because at that age, they are developing very rapidly and they are going to think it's normal. But it is against the cultural disposition that we have but children are not always meant to get everything they want. No. So, when you have a child that has a peer, that has a bad peer, how do you how do you do to them? One of the things Nigerian parents have missed so much is the approach of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, talking to children and making the happen. You see, talking to children goes a long way in them realizing some things. Most of the time, our children can preempt us. When I say that, I mean they can assume what we are going to do. That it will just beat me. So we, our children have normalized to insult and beating. We have not been able to show them that part of kindness. Because when they do something bad, they, already, they are not too embarrassed to face you. So let me take you an example in my workplace. In my place of work, they said I should not salary. I said, no, I cannot do that. They said, why? And then I would rather create a relationship where you will be too embarrassed to offend me than take off your salary. So when your child is following bad peers, please now get closer to him. Acknowledge him, acknowledge that he might not be doing that willingly. Make him always see reasons for him not to associate with them. Number one. Number two, surprise him. Take him on the date. Just own you and him alone. Then you could have actually had one or two people that he would love to listen to and let him just have a random conversation about how pleasant he is and how much he's going to have a good future if he's going to be able to follow this particular path. Play videos of successful people to him. Take him to talks among other people who are great people, who, are, who have a remarkable approach. The way you are coming to the boss, let him sit beside you. At every point in time in your family, let me tell you what my father used to do. Every weekend in our house, we always have a meeting. Every weekend, every Sunday in our house, all of us will come together. He would now say, tell me what you did last week. Tell me what I did as your father. Be free. And tell me what I did I, you don't like. But the next, the thing is that the next Sunday, we should please not make the same complaint about the mistake we made this Sunday. And what like that was how we were able to become better without even meeting. Do you understand what I'm saying? So we have a meeting once in a week, every, every week. So our, our mother, father, all of them would have written what we have done is not good. We would now come and discuss it. He will now say, do you realize that Afiz, you are the only person everybody complain about? So please, make efforts to come next without anybody saying bad things about you. And those little things went a long way. And finally, there are some ages that are challenging for children. Because in psychology, adolescent age is the age of confusion. It is the age you have to get very close to them, talk to them and be their friend. The age of 9, 10, 11, 12 to 15 in the nine by the age. It is a difficult age that you will have to invest your time in your own children. The alignment is easy for you. And I can, we can talk later about other tips. Hayakullah. Now, about your, about your home, that if, someone, if the father is good and the mothers are not good, Muhammad is a good example. 
Kindness goes a long way in changing a lot of things. Look at the woman that used to pour bad water, smelly water to the prophet, so about Adam was The prophet was not comfortable with that, but I will tell you what was shocking to that woman. The day the woman did not pour the water, the prophet of Adam asked for, about her. They said she was sick. He some of our Allah now visited the house. Look at what he said. He said, Assalamu alaikum. We are surprised that we have not seen you do what you used to do to us. We are now concerned if something is happening or you have a little child. Look at the approach. He does not say that. Allah is always merciful. Allah will come for you. She will be your affair Allah will come for you. Which an average Nigerian will do. But look at the tenderness. He said, we have not seen you do what you used to do. We are now concerned if something that overwhelmed you, what happened? Immediately, Jesus said, Allah, 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 Please, just be kind to them and make to have for them. Allah is going to use your own kindness to change them. Because ultimately, the mercy of Allah is better than the mercy of any other person. Desire Allah have the opportunity. Allah, I feel so loved to be here. Desire Allah.